Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to an honestly very hard challenge. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed the previous episode, and if you've decided to try out this challenge too, then feel free to let me know how you're doing, because I think we're doing pretty good right now. I realize that we still have two Baryinas circling us, and that rogue mill too. That is going to be a little bit of an issue. Thankfully, Mist is currently pregnant. She still has four days to go before she can have her baby, but that's probably a good thing. We are struggling with the food supplies. We need to find a way to gather more food, and I think we might want to consider handing out some ranks pretty soon too, because if it does get to the point where one creature is going to starve, we want to make sure that it's not one of the ones who's going to give us the most food in the future. Naturally, I think we're going to have to set our anteaters to the alphas of the tribe. I feel like that would make the most sense. Not only can both Mist and Kingsley, our little King Banana, gather up the acorns in the shells, but they can also scoop up bugs that spawn in the swamplands, or maybe some more termites if we happen to find some out here. There's plenty of grassland tiles, so I'm sure we're going to run into another termite hill soon. It all depends if those defender bears have decided to follow us too. So we have both of them set as alphas? And then I think we should probably set Toxin as an elf as well. I realize that she does have one no paw, but that digging paw is also very, very important. She's the only one in our tribe right now who can actually dig up the roots that we find on the ground. That's still two pieces worth of food every time she finds a root. So you get to be an alpha too. Now I'm thinking that Icebreaker over here, since all he can really do is gather berries, Maybe we should set him as the Omega of the tribe. And I know that's very, very sad, but to be honest, I feel like he would probably give up his food for his mate anyways. She is such a happy-go-lucky, optimistic little creature, taking in all the orphan babies that she finds. And I think she did a pretty good job raising our Dodomingo too. Sweet little Orion, though he doesn't have very much to offer in terms of food, he's the only creature who has the big nose right now. So I believe that means that he has the best skill in smelling. Yeah, looks like the anteater snout? What was that called? The sticky tongue, that's right. The sticky tongue can only smell two tiles away. So he's going to be important just to sense the dangers. And I think that means we're going to leave him as the beta of the tribe. So we have three creatures who will definitely be eating. We have one who's kind of on the cusp. And we have Icebreaker who would be willing to give up his food no matter what. Though thankfully he does have some berries next to him. And with those bunnies watching in the distance, you should probably grab those right now. Every last berry that you can, because I think you're far enough away from the major dangers that you shouldn't have to worry. Which is all well and good because he's probably too far away from the peaceful bear. I think our strategy is also going to be to keep the babies right next to this guy. As long as we make sure that he is constantly paid as our babysitter, he should be able to protect them single-handedly. Then their parents can go off in search of food instead. I think, Orion, we're going to have you clear out the grasses for now. Maybe collecting a little bit more nesting material for us, because I'm sure your mother Dodomingo taught you all about nests. He has been an excellent pathfinder if nothing else. I kind of want to make sure that the nest is clear too, though. While I realize that this would supply us with a little bit more camouflage, I also don't want to accidentally lose this. We should probably make sure that Mist removes herself from these mud puddles too. While she would be able to grab the bugs, it won't help if they spawn here and she catches that sleeping sickness. With the way that she devours Mulberry's misfortune, she almost reminds me of those creatures. I think it's in Japanese folklore that literally devour dreams. I think they're based off of the same animal too. I don't know if we can connect that in any way. But maybe we should have her come down here next to her mate. We'll have her jump over next to this berry bush because I think there's still one more juicy berry left on those branches. I'm pretty sure I saw a couple more berry bushes back here too. Yes, surrounded by those bunnies. We're going to have to do some serious cleanup. And I guess that that's actually where Orion could shine too. He might actually be one of the strongest creatures in the tribe. A three in attack thanks to that big body. Yeah, you are a little defender. Interesting. So we'll have you stay right there next to the baby. 
We'll leave Kingsley right behind the peaceful bear. And as for you, Toxin, are there any more roots that you could reach? It looks like they're all a little bit too far away, but we could at least try to have you worm your way a little bit further down the cliff. Let's have you jump over here and then right back next to Icebreaker. And hopefully everybody is going to be far enough away from the bear Yinas. They're kind of all positioning themselves directly behind the peaceful bear too, almost as if they're using him as some sort of shield. But he is definitely a good shield. Those growls have been enough to keep the bear Yinas away so far. We should still have a baby bear Yina out here as well. I'd still really like to bring him into the tribe, but it all depends what we're going to do with his mother. Oh, and poor Kingsley. I guess we should have moved you away then. Yeah, if they're too close to those mud puddles, then the bugs just end up going to waste. I guess that means our King Banana isn't quite as optimistic as his mother. Like, I can literally just see her twirling around, picking her berries, singing happy, merry songs as she goes. Are there any more berries left on this bush? It looks like there might be a couple. I'm trying to decide if it would be better for us to just catch the bunny. Well, let's have you swipe down the bunny then. I'm sure that your mate wouldn't mind coming over here to pick up the meat. And then I guess pick those extra berries too. So now we have plenty of food to keep us tied over. Ooh, and there's some crabbits down here. That must be awfully tempting for you, Toxin. I wonder if you're getting a little bit curious. Well, Orion is still going to guide you toward those roots. I think he's found that he really enjoys the roots too. These two shared a couple of root meals when they were younger, so it's kind of like their own tradition now. I am a little bit too afraid to leave Kingsley right next to the peaceful bear at the moment. Especially because we don't know if he's still replete. I guess we could bring Orion up here then just to check. Yeah, it looks like he's fine. And the bear Yina is still right there. Oh my gosh. I don't think he's moved an inch. Well, this is a good chance for you to make sure that you're widening our pathways, I guess. Nobody's going to get past you. Nobody's going to get to the royal baby on your watch. So let's go ahead and skip the day again. As the parade of bear Yinas walk by. Oh my gosh. Well, apparently that was our bear Yina mother because Bear Yina Baby is currently eyeing up the peaceful bear. I wonder if he's a little bit curious about our tribe. It sure does seem that way. While his mother has gone straight back into the darkness, the Bear Yina Baby is sparing us that extra glance. So maybe there is a chance that Kingsley will be able to convince him to join their tribe. For now though, Icebreaker, go ahead and take a nice swipe at that bunny. Oh, it looks like all of these bunnies are going to try to steal the berries if you're not careful. I would prefer to bring Mist up here to take care of the bug swarm. So go ahead and settle down in this nest. Take a little bit of a rest after all of that running around, and you can devour that swarm of bugs before it gets to Kingsley again. Or before it gets to Orion. That would not be very good either. Let's offer up a little bit more of our nesting material. I guess you two would have a bit of a connection that way. Both of you have that deep love for crafting the perfect nurseries. It kind of makes you wonder if the peaceful bear actually put this together himself. It is a wonderfully secluded nursery, and while we do have some issues with the mud puddles growing right next to it, it's almost like it was made for our happy little anteaters. You know, I just realized that we haven't actually seen this rogue male step into our territory yet. Probably because nothing interests him here right now but it would be awfully nice if the bear Yina decided to take care of him for us instead. Then we wouldn't have to worry about doing it ourselves. So do you have any more roots in the area? It looks like they're all getting pretty far away. Let's bring you back to this nest then. Oh, another rogue male. Wait a second. Oh, there are so many rogue males on the grass mingle. I mean, as if the bear Yinas weren't enough. I think we might have to go on the offense on the next turn, especially if Toxin grows her third and final gem. Ooh, that was a little bit risky. On oh, the Perhina baby is growing up so fast too, we are really running out of time to do this. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go after this Perhina, otherwise we're going to have a third Perhina to take care of in the grasses. 
Oh, and it looks like another Dodomingo has spawned. Maybe we have another nursery out there then. Well, first things first. Let's make sure that we're scooping up all of these bugs again. Grabbing these berries before the bunnies can get to them. Oh, are you looking for some handouts? Sorry, buddy, but we need all of the food that we can get right now. You are not going to get any extra snacks from us. Maybe we should have Toxin land a quick swipe. It's not going to do very much, but at least it would lower his lifespan a little bit. And it might be enough to scare him away entirely. Oh, and Kingsley. Oh, while you were sleeping, you actually grew your second gem. Oh, we should have had you pick up those bugs then. That would have been a pretty good way to get your revenge. He sure is seeming like a little bit more of a lazy leader than his mother, though. Not necessarily the type to actually get his hands dirty. So maybe he wouldn't be the one to charge into battle here. Or at the very least, he wouldn't bother helping our little Dodomingo get through the grasses. Instead, we might have to turn our attentions to Mist herself. And if she settles down right here next to the friendly Baryuna, scaring away the rogue male in the process. Just a flash of pink fur is slithering between those grasses. That should set Orion up to land at least one attack. So if we bring him in here, he should be able to land a very quick swipe. We only have eight days remaining on the Sparina's lifespan. So go ahead and attack, and then jump back as far as you can, right back next to your fellow guard. Ensuring that our tribe mates won't fall victim to the Baryinas is basically just like a dance. We'll bring them back and forth, landing one attack at a time, and eventually we should be able to whittle away at their lifespans. Now Kingsley. Assuming that the Sparina isn't going to grow up on the next turn, and to be honest, I'm not sure how long it takes for a Sparina to grow up, so this is a little bit risky. What if we had you jump your way over here, sniff around just to make sure that other Sparina is still far away, and then go ahead and indulge in some of these lovely acorns, just for the extra bit of food? And maybe this will give you a good opportunity to whisper some advice into the friendly Baryuna's ear. See, not doing any of the dirty work, but still helping in his own way. A bit of a lazier way, mind you, and a bit of a selfish way, too. But our King of Bananas is done lazing around by the mud. Now, I think you still had one root over here, right? There we go, Toxin. And yet again, that rogue male is going to be right next to you as you skip the day. Let's watch the Baryuna, too. Oh, that Baryina mother was definitely looking for you? Oh my gosh, wait a second. Oh, so much happened, but I think our baby may have passed. Oh no, I didn't even realize, Mist, you were having your next baby on this turn? Oh my gosh, they must have been sick. That means that you and Icebreaker do actually share an immunity gene. And this is just a cruel reminder of how harsh this challenge can be. We didn't even get to meet your next baby. They had already passed by the time they came into this world. That is going to be hard for Miss to swallow, and we'll have to bring her mate over here for sure. But I also want to take a look at this Baryina situation, because it looks like another Baryina mother may have spawned. Oh my gosh, what is going on now? I mean, I'm going to assume that our friendly Baryina did not go back in time. Yeah, this friendly Baryina is zero days old now, so you were just born, little one. Well, that's an interesting situation that we've gotten ourselves into, Kingsley. I don't know if we want you to stay there anymore, then. We'll at least have you go ahead and pick up another one of these acorns. And as your mother scoops up some more bugs sitting in this mud, Oh, we are going to have to be so careful about the rogue male, too. He is not going to use this opportunity to start a family with her. I don't think she's ready for that. Well, let's have Kingsley jump on back here next to the peaceful bear's side. And then I guess we're going to have to send you, Orion, a little bit deeper into the grasses to figure out what exactly is going on. You would protect the babies with your life, right? You are our guard just like the peaceful bear, so jump on in and check this out for us. Yeah, the spare Yuna is definitely brand new. 14 days remaining. Unless maybe it's the one that grew up? 
It's a little bit confusing since we can't see the silhouette of the third Baryina out here. So, I don't know what's going on, but you better at least attack the Baryina for us. Let's have you land your one attack again. And then, where should we put you? Surely the peaceful bear is still going to protect us, right? Let's scoot you on back over here next to Kingsley. Staring eye to eye with your colleague, forming some grand plan of escape. And now let's bring Icebreaker back. Unfortunately, all of your berries are gone anyways. So as we clear out a pathway back to the berry bush, we'll have you creep back to the nursery to see what has become of your second baby. Now that we know that there's a potential that each of their babies is going to be sick, I'm not sure if we actually want them to have any more. I mean, that would be a complete waste of six days. But then Kingsley was so lucky, especially to receive the sticky tongue over the derps now. So maybe Mist wouldn't lose hope. After munching on some more of Mulberry's misfortune, she has decided that she is not giving in to those negative thoughts. Good vibes only in this tribe. So she would still be willing to have another baby with Icebreaker, and that should keep her protected for the next few days too. Now I guess we could bring Toxin a little bit further down, grab up that extra root for us. But you have to be growing your next gem soon. She's 16 days old now. I probably should have verified when all of our other creatures grew their third gem, but we'll keep a closer eye on it for this cycle. So let's go ahead and skip the day again. Watching the grasses, of course. Still no sign of those Baryinas, so you must have scared them away. It's good to know that the Peaceful Bear is so good at his job. As long as we keep him happy, of course. So we're going to have to feed him again. Now where did the rogue male go? Because I see Toxin, you have indeed grown your third gem. So 17 days is when they become an official adult in this world. Well, let's leave you right there for now. We'll see if the rogue male shows his face again. And Kingsley, why don't you go ahead and offer up the Nista material for us? I think that Orion is a little bit too busy with the Baryina anyways. You go ahead, Mist, munch on a little bit of that misfortune. None of those bad vibes allowed near your family. And then we'll have you play a little bit of leapfrog into the grass again. You can help Orion get straight over to that Baryina once more. Oh my gosh, the entire Baryina family? Oh, we have a little healing fruit out here. That is not going to help us, though. That is so unfortunate that the healing fruit means nothing to our tribe. I mean, finding one of these things would usually be cause for celebration. It would be considered a very, very fortunate thing. So you would almost think that Mist would have a role to play, too, with the lucky streak that she has going. But while she's great at dispelling Mulberry's misfortune, I guess wounds are a little bit different. Poor little anteater knows absolutely nothing about healing. So, land that extra attack. Oh my gosh, Orion? You actually took down the Baryina? Oh no, but now we have to grab that meat? We have to get that meat before the other Baryina picks it up instead. Ten pieces of food would be so helpful. And we can actually invite the friendly Baryina now too. Oh, this is going to be tricky. We have to get Orion away. We'll scoot him back. And then can we bring Icebreaker up here? There you go. Icebreaker with the nimblest feet in the entire tribe. You can swipe up that meat and then jump right back to the safety of the nursery. I guess we're just going to have to cross our fingers that the baby Baryina doesn't go too far away. I would imagine that he's probably going to end up following this Baryina. I mean, I know we definitely slayed its mother. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to invite him yet. But I'm not sure if they would attach to different members of their species. So this is going to be an interesting night to watch. I'm really surprised that you didn't have any trouble with that rogue male, too. I guess you really did scare him. Oh, wait a second. She has a spiky body. Is it that why the rogue male is leaving her alone? I vaguely remember that spiky-bodied females were not going to get bothered by the rogue males. Maybe that is the case. 
Toxin, you have a little secret weapon that I didn't even consider. Well, I remember calling you fearless before. Even as a little baby, you knew that you had nothing to fear out here. So I guess that means we could actually bring you further into the grass to search for a few more of those roots. Let's actually have you come down this way, maybe, to see if we can find that berry bush again. We want to make sure that we have a pretty clear pathway to this thing, so let's have you widen that for us. Now we just have you, Mist, who we're going to scoot right on back to that nest. We'll have Kingsley go ahead and pick up the grass here, too. Gotta make sure that we have enough nesting material for our peaceful bear when he starts getting hungry again. Now, did the bear Yina grow up? It almost looked like maybe the bear Yina got a bit older. Alright, go ahead and grab those last little bugs. Thankfully, the mud has finally dried up, so we won't have to worry about that so much anymore. And now, let's see if we can investigate. We'll bring an Icebreaker in here this time. He would probably prefer his meat to rest anyways. And it looks like the baby bear Yina did indeed attach to the other bear Yina overnight. Well, that's going to make this a little bit trickier. We could bring Kingsley up here to investigate, but I'm not sure that we're going to want to leave him there. He still only has two gems on him, so he wouldn't be able to jump away, and surely he would be too far away to be protected by the peaceful bear. So we're going to want to use somebody who would still have an extra turn to spare. To be honest, I guess we could just have you guys go ahead and pick up the grass. Icebreaker can finally clear out the area right underneath the oak tree, making it easier for him to run across these fields in the future. I like to see that there are so many roots over there too. Maybe you should actually turn your attention this way. We'll have you scoot up behind him, settle down right next to the oak tree. Oh, there's our little pink friend. This is actually our very first time getting a good glimpse at the pink rogue male. Probably the more unfortunate of the two for breeding. Those frog toes are not going to do us any favors, especially if they start showing up in abundance in our inactive traits. So we are definitely going to steer clear from you. I wonder if we could have Kingsley settle down back here to pick up a few more of these acorns. I feel like maybe he's trying to gather a whole bunch so he can offer it up as a gift to the baby bear Yina. He still wants to make friends with that little guy, and whether it's just a way for him to gain a powerful ally, or whether he truly sees potential in their friendship, he's now letting that little baby bear Yina get away a second time. So one last time, let's go ahead and skip the day, and we'll see if the bear Yina's come a little bit closer to us. Excellent, it looks like they did. A little bit too close for comfort, I have to admit. I definitely don't like seeing a bear Yina so close to you, Icebreaker. But I wonder if we could actually take down this one too. Six days remaining on its lifespan. So, Orion. If you used one of your turns, that would be three. Then we could use the rest from Icebreaker to take her down entirely. Yeah, I think that might be our best shot. One more bear Yina out of the way, and the oak tree is safe once more. So, little Kingsley, even though you only have two gems to spare, now that we don't have any danger out here, we could actually bring you straight over to the baby bear Yina to finally offer up that reward. Before you get away anymore, and before you potentially grow up on us, Kingsley will whisper some royal secrets into your ear promising glory if only you join his court. At this point, I think the wildlife itself has actually been the biggest help to the tribe. The peaceful bear is keeping our babies safe, and now we actually have a little guard of our own in the friendly bear Yina. I wonder if the friendly bear Yina's attack would actually take down the other bear Yina's too. I know that the damage multiplier doesn't affect our creatures. It doesn't make us stronger in any way, but I wonder if our baby bear Yuna will still feel a little bit of that supernatural strength. I guess we're pretty likely to find out in the next episode. Let's just have Toxin go ahead and grab up that bear Yuna meat so we don't lose track of that too. And yeah, we are doing much better than we were last time. Now we have 26 pieces of food, only 5 creatures to feed. So in the next episode, we'll see if Mist can finally have her second baby. That's probably the saddest thing that's happened in the series so far. 
but Miss knows that great things are waiting for her family, if only she keeps a positive mind. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!